Hi everyone, I'm Josie Woes and today we're going to be reading Disney Pixar's Coco. Now this is from the Disney Pixar Movie Collection, a special Disney storybook series. It's a brand new release and the movie is yet to come out in cinemas. So I hope you enjoy it. Make sure you buy this book online or in store and read along at home. Here we go. Many years ago, in a tiny town called Santa Cecilia, a little girl named Coco lived with her parents. Coco's home was full of music and dancing, but one day her father left to follow a dream of music. Coco's mother, Mama Amelda, needed money for food and clothes, so she learned how to make shoes. Her business did well and her family grew, but she would not speak about Coco's father. She tore his face out of the family photo and she would have no music in the Rivera household. Coco grew up and had a family of her own with many grandchildren and great grandchildren. One of them was called Miguel and he dreamed of being a musician just like his idol, Ernesto de la Cruz. But Miguel's dream was a secret because of the family rule, no music. Miguel wished he could tell his mama Coco that music made him happier than anything, but he could only share his secret with a street dog named Dante. The Rivera family were shoemakers and everyone worked in the family business when they grew up. Miguel's grandmother, Elena, was the head of the family. He needed her permission to be a musician, but the family rule was very important to her. In fact, everything about family was important to her. Miguel didn't dare to tell her how he felt. On the day before Dia de la Muertos, Elena filled his arms with marigolds. Tonight is about family, she said. Mama Coco listened as Eleanor told Miguel why Dia de los Muertos was such a special celebration. This is the one night of the year when our ancestors can visit us, she said. She explained that when their ancestors' photos were placed on the ofrenda altar, their spirits could cross over to the land of the living. Marigold petals would help the spirits find their way. Later in his attic hideout, Miguel strummed his secret guitar and watched an old De La Cruz film. Ernesto De La Cruz was dead, but Miguel had loved his music for as long as he could remember. When you see your moment, you must seize it, said the singer. I've got to seize my moment, Miguel cried. Miguel raced off to tell his grandmother that he wanted to be a musician, but on the way, Dante accidentally smashed a family of friend of photo frame. Miguel unfolded the torn photo inside and his heart leapt with excitement. The man in the photo was holding De La Cruz's guitar. Mama Coco's father was Ernesto de la Cruz, Miguel exclaimed. Miguel could hardly wait to tell his family the news, but instead of being excited, they were furious. Eleanor grabbed his precious guitar and smashed it to pieces. Shocked and hurt, Miguel ran from his house. There was a talent show in the plaza and he longed to join in but he couldn't take part without a guitar. Miguel had never felt so alone. Great, great grandfather, what am I supposed to do, he whispered. Suddenly, a wonderful idea came to him. He hurried to Dela Cruz's tomb and creeped inside. The musician's famous guitar was hanging on the wall. I need to borrow this, Miguel whispered. He lifted it off the wall and strummed a chord. Suddenly, glowing marigold petals started to swirl around him. 
he felt strangely dizzy. The dock door flew open and the groundsman rushed in. Who's in there, he called. Miguel tried to explain, but the man walked straight through him. Miguel raced out of the tomb and fell straight into an open grave. He took the hand of a kind woman who offered to help him, only to realize she was a skeleton. There were skeletons everywhere. Worse still, living people couldn't see him. Only Dante could see Miguel. What had happened to him? In his panic, Miguel bumped into more skeletons, and these ones knew his name. They were his ancestors. Miguel felt calmer. Even though they were dead, these people were his family. He could trust them. They decided to take him to the land of the dead. Mama Amelda will know what to do, they said. Miguel and Dante walked across a glowing bridge of marigold petals, which led from the land of the living to the beautiful land of the dead. Flying creatures of all shapes and sizes zoomed around the sparkling buildings. Miguel's family told him that they were in the spirit guides of the dead. A skeleton called Hector was trying to cross the bridge, but no one had put a photo on an ofrenda so he could not get across. Miguel forgot about Hector when he found Mama Imelda. She was annoyed because she hadn't been able to cross into the land of the living. When Miguel explained that it was because he had taken her photo from the ofrenda, she was absolutely furious. Miguel had been cursed because he had taken the guitar from the tomb. To get home, he needed his family's blessing before sunrise. Without it, he would turn into a skeleton forever. Mama Imelda held up a marigold petal, which started to glow. I give you my blessing to go home, she said. But then she added a condition, put my photo back on the ofrenda and never play music again. Miguel was shocked. He couldn't promise that. Miguel and Dante slipped away from Mama Imelda. I need a musician's blessing, Miguel said. We've got to find my great-great-grandpa. Just then, Miguel overheard the skeleton called Hector boasting that he knew Ernesto de la Cruz. Miguel made a deal with him. Hector would help Miguel to get his great-great-grandpa's blessing. In return, Miguel would put a photo of Hector on his family ofrenda. Then Hector would be able to cross the Marigold Bridge to the land of the living. Hector helped Miguel to disguise himself as a skeleton. Then they hurried to Dela Cruz's show, the Sunrise Spectacular. But the singer wasn't in the rehearsal area. Ernesto doesn't do rehearsals, said an artist called Frida. He's too busy hosting that fancy party at the top of his tower. Miguel needed to get into that party. Luckily, there was a contest in the plaza, and the winner would perform at Dela Cruz's party. It was Miguel's best chance, but he was going to need a guitar. Hector remembered that his friend, Chicharo, had a guitar. But poor Chicharo had begun to fade. Hector played a song to comfort him as he vanished into dust. When there's no one left in the living world who remembers you, you disappear from this world, Hector explained. We call it the final death. He handed Miguel the guitar. Come on, you've got a contest to win. Miguel performed at the contest and the audience went wild. But meanwhile, his ancestors had been looking for him. They asked the announcer on stage to tell everyone to look out for a living boy. Miguel was trapped. They had found him. Miguel tried to get away, but Mama Imelda spotted him. I am giving you my blessing and you are going home, she said. I don't want your blessing, Miguel cried. He couldn't let her send him home without music. 
Through all his adventures, it was still the most important wish in his heart. Why wouldn't his family let him follow his heart? Family should support you, he said, but you never will. They well ran to Delacruz's tower and climbed to the top of the grand staircase. There was a crowd of people below, and he could see Delacruz. He knew that he what he had to do. Miguel began to play, and the crowd fell silent. He walked towards Ernesto de la Cruz, strumming and singing. Just as he reached de la Cruz, Miguel tripped and fell into the pool. You are that boy, the musician exclaimed, the one who came from the land of the living. Miguel realized that the water had washed the disguise away from his face. It was time to tell his idol who he was. Ernesto de la Cruz was thrilled to find out that he was Miguel's great-great-grandfather. He lifted Miguel onto his shoulders for all the crowd to see. You, my great-great-grandson, are meant to be a musician, announced de la Cruz proudly. Knowing he was running out of time, Miguel asked for de la Cruz's blessing. But at that moment, Hector found them. You said you'd take back my photo, he said. You promised me well. He held out the photo of himself. Suddenly he looked pale and weak. My friend, Dela Cruz murmured, recognizing the man in the picture. You're, you're being forgotten. And whose fault is that, said Hector. Those were my songs you took. My songs that made you famous. Miguel gasped. Could this be true? Hector told Miguel that he was alive. He had been a songwriter. He had left his family to play music with de la Cruz, and then he had changed his mind. He had wanted to go home, but de la Cruz had decided to get rid of Hector and steal his songs. You poisoned me, Hector cried. He tried to grab de la Cruz, but guards dragged him away. Miguel was trembling. Why had his idol done such a terrible thing? And would de la Cruz still send Miguel back home now that the boy knew about Hector? De la Cruz folded Hector's photo and put it in his pocket. You were going to give me your blessing, said Miguel, feeling his heart thumping in his chest. De la Cruz looked at him and then called the guards to take him away. But I'm your family, Miguel cried. And Hector was my best friend, said de la Cruz, watching as the guards threw Miguel into a deep pit. Miguel found Hector in the pit. She's forgotten me, Hector said. My daughter, my Coco. He sounded as if his heart would break. Miguel's head was spinning. He pulled his family's a friend a photo out of his pocket. That's my mama Coco, he said, pointing at the picture of his great-grandmother. Where? Family? said Hector. He told Miguel that de la Cruz's most famous song, Remember Me, was a lullaby he had written for Coco, so she wouldn't forget him while he was away. Miguel smiled at Hector, full of pride and love. Just then, Dante's friendly face peered into the pit. He had helped Pepita, Mama Imelda's spirit guide, to find them. Miguel's heart swelled when he realized that Dante was more than just an ordinary dog. He was a true spirit guide. Pepita swooped down and they climbed on her back. Pepita carried them to a nearby plaza where the rest of Miguel's ancestors were waiting. Mama Imelda looked at Hector, her long-lost husband. He was still fading away. Soon he would be gone forever. It's Coco, she said. She's forgotten you. Miguel couldn't let that happen to Hector. He had to get the photo back from de la Cruz. When Mama Imelda heard what had happened all those years ago, she agreed to help. At the Sunrise Spectacular, Miguel and his family chased de la Cruz. The singer's guards tried to catch them, but Mama Imelda grabbed Hector's photo. Suddenly, the stage began to rise. Sing, cried Miguel. 
Mama Imelda's voice was as clear as a bell. She enchanted the crowd, and the guards fell back. Dela Cruz joined in the song, still trying to snatch the photo back from her. At the end of the song, Mama Imelda still had the picture. She ran into Hector's arms, then gave Miguel the photo and held up a glowing marigold petal. Miguel, I give you my blessing, she said. Go home, put up your owl photos and never forget how much your family loves you. But suddenly strong hands grabbed Miguel. He led Dela Cruz picked him up and flung him off the building. Hector's photo fell from Miguel's hand as he tumbled over the edge. The audience cried out in horror. Dela Cruz had forgotten that there were big screens showing everything he did. Pepita caught Miguel and carried the boy to his ancestors. The audience cheered and everyone knew the truth at last. Ernesto de la Cruz was a fraud and a crook. The sun's rays were peering over the horizon. It was almost sunrise. We're both out of time, Hector whispered. No, no, Coco can't forget you, said Miguel. Hector reached for a marigold petal. You have our blessing, Miguel. No conditions, added Mama Imelda, helping Hector lift the marigold petal. The petal glowed and whoosh, Miguel was brought home. Back in Santa Cecilia, Miguel pelted towards his home, clutching Dela Cruz's guitar. He still had a chance to save Hector. When he reached home, he raced to Mama Coco's side. I saw your papa, he said. Mama Coco said nothing. She just stared into space. Then Miguel strummed the guitar and started to sing Remember Me. Mama Coco's eyes brightened and she almost looked younger. Her memories were flooding back. Then she joined in with a song that her father had written for her. Afterwards, Mama Coco pulled out an old book and showed them a torn picture of Hector. She began to tell stories about her papa to her family. Miguel smiled. He could help Hector after all. A year passed and Dia de los Muertos arrived again, but this time things were very different. People knew the truth about Ernesto de la Cruz, and Hector Rivera's name was becoming famous. The Rivera family had said yes to music, and music had brought them together again. Thanks for reading with me everyone. If you like this book, make sure you buy it so you can read along at home and you can get to the movies and see this awesome new Disney Pixar movie, Coco. I'm Tracy Waste. If you liked my videos, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and I'll see you later. Bye.